So in that previous example, we could say, you know, here's we, we're sprinkling the AGCL into the into the water. What is the concentration of that chemical at the point of saturation? Well, you can look up the KSP value for that equilibrium reaction in a data booklet or a or a KSP chart, and you can find that the KSP for in this case AGCL is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Now how do you use that in a calculation and what are you calculating for? Now, now listen to the question. The question is what is the concentration of AGCL that makes a saturated solution? We also say what is the molar solubility of AGCL in solution? At, well, let's say this is all at 25 degrees Celsius, by the way, because we know that the K values are specific. These are at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we're really looking for is the concentration of the AGCL. Now, here's the thing. This is what I don't like about these kind of questions, but you can't avoid it. We're not finding really the concentration of a solid. And this is why I was hedging before when I was talking to you about why this is really an aqueous chemical. It really does break down in aqueous form into form these, forming those ions in solution. Here's the deal. What we're really looking for, when we talk about the compound, yeah, we're going to find the concentration of this compound at equilibrium. But the thing is, really, that compound is really expressed as concentration of ions in solution, yes. And you can't have the concentration of a solid, that's true. But when we talk about the molar solubility of this compound, we're really looking for its concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so how do you do that? So, here's the thing. I don't know, I don't care about anything about this because it's a solid, but here's what I do know. One of these makes one of these and one of these. So if this is going to lose from itself, it's going to lose X to form. Initially you have nothing here, but you're going to gain X here and gain X here to be able to form X here and X here. I don't care how, whatever this concentration is here, I don't care about this solid, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to find the concept, these x values, but when I find that x value, I can work backwards and that will be really, honestly, that will be the concentration of that chemical at equilibrium. Okay, so now, how do we actually find that? Well, here's the equilibrium expression. Ksp equals the concentration of these two ions multiplied together. So they're both x at equilibrium, so it's x squared. So x equals, when you do the math, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. What is that? That's moles per liter. Of what? That's the concentration of the Ag positive and the concentration of the... It's equal to also the concentration of the Cl negative at equilibrium, right? At e equilibrium. Those are the concentrations there. And since it's a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, guess what you just found out? That the concentration of AgCl in solution at equilibrium is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. Then you know what you could do? If you knew what volume you had of a solution, then you, would, you could actually work backwards and calculate the mass from the moles per liter here. You could find the moles if you knew the volume and then find the grams of chemical that it would take to just reach the point of complete saturation. And you can do that, and you can see that. You can, you can say, oh, it's, it's, it's 0 0.05 grams. And so you add in 0 0.04, and it'll still dissolve. But as soon as you hit that 0 0.05, all of a sudden, the crystals form at the bottom, do not actually uh, come out, and you've reached that molar solubility point, that point where, where no more chemical will dissolve, or also the point at which a precipitate will form. We'll show you that coming up.